Happy Sunday Church. My name is Wakunze Melissa and I'll be your host today. I'm excited to be with you on a beautiful day such as this and I'm sure you'll be blessed today. Now today someone is titled, It is Time to Bounce Back by our very own Pastor Fred Isaac Atago. And I'm sure you'll have a great time. Let us start with a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the privilege of listening to your word. We pray and ask that you might speak to our spirits and bless us that our spirits are steered unto good works. We bless your name and worship you in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Welcome to church.
when I has fallen, when fear is common, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Fred uh, Isaac Katagwa. I must say we are very grateful. We want to say a big thank you to all of you, our uh, followers, our viewers, all of you who take your time to tune in. And I want to let you know we pray for you. Actually, I have taken time to pray for you. And as we begin today, I want to pray for you some more. I want to pray for you some more. Let us pray together, even before we dive into God's word. Father, we come before you this day. We thank you for all your goodness and all your mercies. Your mercies are new every morning, every day. And even today, we believe that your mercies are new. Your grace is still sufficient for us all. Father, I pray for all these men and women, all these friends who are following us from different parts of the nation and the region and the world. God, I pray that you bless them and bless us all. Right now, Lord, whatever they are going through, I speak a breakthrough. I speak 
a miracle. I speak a visitation you alone can give and are able to give. God, I bless your name, magnify your name. And even as we uh, come into the preaching of your word, this is my prayer, that you speak to us. Anoint the preaching of your word. Lord, I pray that you help me to be clear and that you help somebody somewhere today to be ministered to. May today be a very special day, miraculous day for someone somewhere. I give you praise. I magnify you and exalt you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I give praise to God. Have you ever played sports? And, uh, and, 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 and if you have ever played sports, you know what it means to bounce back. After you have suffered a defeat, you need a comeback with a win. And in business, and in the business world, if you have suffered a setback, you always look forward to a time of bouncing back with a profitable day. A bouncing back with a profitable day. The title of my message today is, It is Time to Bounce Back. It is Time to Bounce Back. I am very excited this day as I bring this message because, beloved, I wish that all of us find that moment in life when you are propelled to bounce back. We call that resilience. Resilience is the ability and the capacity to bounce back after many disruptions in life. And you all know we have disruptions. They come in so many shapes. They come at different times. They attack from all angles. But I pray that the God of heaven, the God who is able, the God who is here, the God who is with us, will give you the ability to bounce back. He will give you the ability to come back. I want us to look at some men and women in scriptures who did not allow what they are going through to become a, a, an obstacle. But they looked at it as an opportunity. I want to bring to you the first personality who had a comeback. And this is none other than Samson. Samson in the Bible. Samson is found in the book of Judges. And to hear about him, you begin from chapter 13. Chapter 13 tells us about his miraculous birth. The Bible says, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. That is uh, Judges chapter 13. And the Lord delivered them to the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. Okay? A certain man named Manoah from the clan of Danites had a wife who, who was childless, unable to give birth. The angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. So Samson's birth was very miraculous. And there was a list of instructions on how he was to live. He was to live a Nazareth life, a special life. He's a man who was known to, who was known to drink any, any alcohol in his life. He's a man, as per instruction, no laser, no razor bread, no shaving would happen on his head. Because the secret of his strength was in the hair that he had. Chapter 14 talks about him getting married, telling his family, please find me. Find me a wife. 
and all that is telling us about him. Chapter 14, we see him fighting many battles. The Bible says this man at one time killed 1,000 Philistine men with a donkey's jawbone. Imagine, imagine. He's a man one day when the Philistine had come to take charge and finish him, he took hold of the gate of the city gates and held it in his hands and removed it and escaped. He's a man one day who captured 300 folks and lit on their tails on fire and let them go uh, burn all the, the fields and the Philistines were amazed. We're amazed. Now, chapter 13 is his birth. Chapter 14 is marriage and growing up and getting, wanting to get married. And he continues in 15 with working exploits, doing things beyond what one could do. But now, in chapter 16 is where we find him trashing his potential. That is where I want to talk about a bouncing back. Yes, come to chapter 16 with me. Look at verse 6. Let me begin from verse 4. Verse 4, he fell in love with a woman. The Bible says one day Samson went to gather where he saw a prostitute. Of all women, a prostitute. He went in and spent a night with her. That was the beginning of him ruining his life, of him failing to control his body, to control and overcome the temptations that were coming his way. In verse 6, the Bible says, Delilah asked him, where is the source of your strength. Come on, tell me. Tell me, where do you get all this power? Because he was very, very powerful. Men who are following me right now. Satan has always set traps for you. Please don't fall in those traps. He wants to use her, I mean that prostitute, who is tempting you. He wants to use that harrow, that somebody. Be careful because she will suck your strength and you'll be like any other person. Now, this is not just to uh, men. Even women, be very careful. Those people whom we interact with, those people asking you the secret of your beauty, they're asking you the point of your weakness. They're asking you what excites you. You never know where they are heading. The devil uses many people to disrupt us. Verse 7. Um, you see that Delilah begins to, to toy, to play with him, trying to get closer and closer, such that he may reveal the strength that he has where he gets that strength. Verse 17, the Bible says in verse 17, chapter 16, verse 17, the Bible says, So he told her everything. Jesus, have mercy. He told her everything. No laser has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite, dedicated to God from my mother's womb. And if my head were to be shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. He told the secret of his strength. Samson was very powerful, was a man full of strength like no other. And from birth, he had been set aside. Pause, let me talk to you for a minute. 
The Lord created you for a purpose, for a mission. And you have a destiny. You have a future. You have been set apart in whatever you are doing to be used of God. But the devil always wants to know how he can pull you down. Be strengthened. Be encouraged. Let me tell you. Like I told you the other time, the devil comes to steal. To steal your joy. To steal your future. To steal your happiness. The devil comes to, 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 to destroy to destroy whatever God has purposed for you. But I have some good news, and it is great good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. Jesus came that you may have life and life in abundance. God will give you success. God is for you and God is for me. Come on, give him praise if you believe that is your message right now. Praise be to God in the highest. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus who is with us and for us. Back to this man who needed a bounce back. Verse 21 after turning his strength, he was captured. Okay? They put his eyes out. Okay? And they made a public spectacle of him. Going in circles. Do not allow the devil to bury you. Do not allow him to bully you. Verse 22. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Praise our Father who remembers us. The Bible says the hair began to grow. Samson could have died as a nobody, could have died as a man who has accomplished nothing. But thanks be to God, who remembers us and gives us a moment in life when we are able to bounce back. Now the rulers of the Philistines had assembled to offer a great sacrifice to their goddess, Dagon. And they were gathered to celebrate and to have a party and, do, uh, and have meals and have a great time. And guess whom they were they called upon to entertain them? It is this man, Samson. While they were in high spirit, verse 25, they shouted, bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison to come and perform for them. Remember, this was the man who had kicked them left, right, and center. Remember, this is the guy who had killed so many who had fought battles like no other. Now, they want him to entertain them. I don't know whether it was going to be a dancing entertainment. I don't know whether they wanted to see him with no eyes and feel entertained. I don't know whether they wanted to see him with no hair and be entertained. Whatever it was, it wasn't a good deal for him. When they stood him among the pillars, inside they were up like on the balcons and they sat him in to entertain them. The Bible says, Samson said the servant who held his hand, put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Watch this, watch this. Then the temple was crowded with men and women, all of rulers and Philistines were there, and the roof was full of thousands and thousands of men and women watching Samson perform. Perform. Now, listen to this. This is how we bounce back. 
If you were asking me, Pastor, you're talking about a bounce back. How do I bounce back? You come back to your senses and you pray a prayer like this one. Verse 28. Then Samson prayed to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me. Let me stop there. Samson prayed a brief, specific, straight to the point prayer. And he said, Sovereign Lord, please remember me. Remember me and strengthen me again. Again. As I speak right now, you need to pray a prayer and ask God to remember you. Ask God to give you your strength again. Ask God to reconnect you again. Ask God to give you hope again. Because we serve a God who remembers. He remembers his people. And he remembers our sins no more. Yes, he remembers us. He remembers us. Samson prayed, God, please remember me and strengthen me just once more, just once more. Ho, oh, oh. ho, yes, verse 29. Then Samson reached towards the two center pillars on which the temple stood. Okay, bracing himself against them, right hand on one, left hand on the other. Samson said, let me die with a Philistine. Then he pushed all oh, with his mighty and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people. Thus, he killed many more, more than he had killed in his lifetime. How do you call that? I call that a bouncing back. A bouncing back. I call that a bouncing back in power. Samson I believe he finished well. Yes, he had made a mess of himself. I believe he had trusted his potential. Probably he would have done more, but he had a comeback. And that comeback came when he realized that there is a God who answers prayers. And he called on him, that God. And when he called on him, that God answered him and he killed so many more than he has ever killed before. Brothers and sisters, it is time to bounce back. If you are seated with someone in your sofas or in your car or wherever you are, touch them for me and tell them it is a time to bounce back. It is time to bounce back. It is time to remember where we have made ourselves a mess. It is time where we are to know where we have fallen and come back. Listen, I know the devil has been whispering to you and he tells you, you are a gone case. You are on drugs. You've made yourself a mess. You are no longer in ministry. You are no longer having a job. And he has whispered failure. Today, I bring good news to you. And I am fully persuaded that the God we serve is a God of a comeback, of a bouncing back. I wish I had time. This whole Bible is full of men and women who had a life of a bouncing back. You remember Jacob, the liar? Jacob, the thief? The one who stole his brother's blessing. The Bible says one day he came to his senses and he said, I am going back. I am bouncing back. The Bible says that Jacob, he got all his wives and his children and he put them ahead of him. And he started a journey of going back to meet his brother Esau. The Bible says there was a moment when he was left alone and he wrestled with God 
until God gave him a new name, Israel. Some of you who are there, you are left alone for a purpose. You are not alone because God has abandoned you. God has left you there in that situation for you to come back to your senses, to bounce back. Jacob bounced back. Who else? Do you remember David? Didn't he mess himself up? Didn't he sleep with, with women and made himself a mess? But a time came, he had a come back, a bouncing back. I pray that the God of heaven will give you a bouncing back. You will come back strong and better. The Bible is full of men who messed up. I told you about Peter. Peter denied Jesus Christ. Peter was going back fishing. But who was used mightily in Acts chapter 2? Who is the evangelist who preached one day and 3,000 men came to Jesus? Who? Who is the person who performed miracles, signs, and wonders like Peter? Actually, the whole book, Acts of the Apostles, if they had called it the Acts of Peter and Paul, I would not urge them a lot. Because from chapter 1, you see Peter and John, Peter and John. And then when you got the last chapters is where you begin seeing Paul. God is a God who can give you a bouncing back moment. Yes, bounce back. Bounce back, my friend. Bounce back, my friend. Don't allow the devil to play you, to call you to come and entertain the goddesses of the world, the evil people of the world. Just say, God, remember me. And I want to bounce back, and you will bounce back. Yes, I don't care whether since January you've messed up your life. This June, this Sunday, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of your bouncing back. Yes, bouncing back, even to your job. You can bounce back. You can bounce back. Samson is a typical example. And today I've told about, talked about Samson. Okay? For him it was a sin. But probably it is not sin. It is not sin. It is the issues of this world. It is the suffering that come. It is the loss that he went through. And he did not sin against God. Another example that shows us a bouncing back is the life of a man called Job. The Bible says, there lived a man who feared God and shunned evil. And this man is Job. He was a wise man. He was a righteous man. He was a rich man. He had almost everything. And the devil, Satan came and said, do you think he fears you for nothing? Give me his life and I will show you that it is because of what he has. Is it because of what you have that you came to church today? Is it because of what you have that you are watching today? Now, this happened to Job. Chapter 1 tells us Job lost, lost his property and his children. Chapter 2 tells us Job lost his health. Chapter 7, Job has no comfort in his life for his friends denied him. Many of them came and they started telling him, you sinned against God, probably you sinned, please repent. Remember, Job had not sinned. It was the testing of the Lord. It was a moment when God knew what he was up to. It was the valley that he was going through for us to learn from all that. Chapter 13, Job says, Though he slay me, yet I'll serve him. That is Job. Job says, even if I am down, I know my Redeemer lives. I know I can face 
tomorrow. I know I am not forgotten. May I announce this day that you are not forgotten. They might have forgotten you, but let me say you are not forsaken. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you in misery for forever. Now, chapter 15 of Job, Job chooses his foolishness and his stupidity. Chapter 22, he cursed the day he was born. I'm telling you, Job had it rough, but I love chapter 42. Chapter 42, it is his bouncing back. Job bounced back. Bible says in verse 10, now the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. And like that, Samson prayed for himself and he bounced back. Job prayed for his friends and he bounced back. Some of you, they have annoyed you. They have betrayed you. They have spoken evil against you and you hate them to the dot. You don't want to see them. You don't want to hear them. You have deleted their names everywhere. God is a God who can deliver you when you deliver yourself from that bitterness by praying for them. How many of us could lose everything and keep going? Could God trust you enough that everything from us, uh, that everything that we have is known to what we hold on? How many of us who can lose children, you lose your cattle, you lose your sheep, you lose your land, you lose your servants, you lose your bed, your body, your skin. It is going, but you still keep going and keep going. Hey, I've got a word from heaven for you today. And the word is, it is time to bounce back. It is time to come back to your senses. Listen, if you lose your home, you can still bounce back. If you have lost your children, God is a God who can give you the grace to bounce back. I know it is hard. I know it is very hard. Don't this sickness of Job speak volumes to us, friends? Wouldn't it have caused Job to bury his faith, bury himself in the sun and Forget everything. Do not allow diversification of divorce depress you. Maybe you've just gone through a divorce. And life is hard. You are lonely. You are in pain. You are in loss. I am here to announce a time of bouncing back. Yes. I am here to announce a time of bouncing back. Do not allow the frustrations over your finance. Keep your face frozen. No way. Do not allow it. Bounce back and find freedom in your finances by giving to God, by becoming very generous than ever before. Do not allow the rotten relationship in your life to ruin you. Yes, that relationship might be rotten and gone, but do not allow it to ruin your life. Bounce back. Reach out for new relationships with your Redeemer. Reach out for new relationships with other people. Friends, God will give you a bouncing back. Do not allow the pain of the past to pull you down. May I say it again? Listen, do not allow the pain of the past to pull you down. It is time to bounce back. Tell your neighbor once again, it is time to bounce back. Tell yourself that, listen, it is time to bounce back. The Bible says that the man called Job bounced back. The Bible says in Job 42, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. And I have despised myself because 
I had just heard. Now I have seen. As I finish, as I conclude, brothers and sisters, what do I want to say to all of us who are gathered here today? This is what I want to say. You had heard that he is Jehovah, Jireh, God who provides. I pray that God will cause you to see him providing. You had heard that he is Jehovah Rapha, God who heals. I pray that your eyes will see that coming to life. I pray for a comeback, beloved. I pray for a bouncing back. And I pray that you say, you will echo these words with boldness. And say with no fear that I had heard, now I have seen. God is real. God is mighty. It is a time to come back to your senses and bounce back in strength and in power. Possible. Probably you're asking, Pastor, tell me three, four steps that I can do. Number one is for you to acknowledge the state you are in right now. Do not lie yourself. Do not lie others. If you are in sin, it is sin and sin is cancer. Just like Samson, you need to acknowledge your sin and pray for God's forgiveness. And number two, after acknowledging your state, I ask you to remember where you have fallen. Remember how far you have gone. Okay? Remember and make up your mind to come back. In the making up your mind, number two is that pray. Pray and ask God to remember you. To remember you. To remember you. And finally, surrender to him. Okay? Acknowledge your state. Okay? Of where you are. And, and forgive and pray and decide to surrender everything to him. Now, before I finish, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for those of you who need a bouncing back. And if you need more conversation on this, give us a call at New Life Bible Church. Our telephone number is on the screen and our website is, is, has all the information. Give us a call. We want to walk with you on the path to bouncing back. We want to help you on this journey. We don't want that devil to keep you in that corner for life. Now, I don't care which church you go to, whether you are our member or not, as long as you want to come back to God, as long as you want to come back, I have good news for you. It is still possible. Shall we pray together? Let's pray. Great and awesome God, who is like you in all the earth? Because God, you are merciful. You are gracious. You are mighty. There is no one like you. When I read the scriptures, I'm encouraged. Uh, when I see lives that you have touched and transformed by your power and your grace. And this day, Lord God, before me, there are men and women who need to bounce back. So I pray that in your grace, in your mercy, please remember them. Remember them, O oh Lord, and bring them back to yourself. Give them the grace to stand and start the journey back to the Father. Start the journey on their knees, Lord. I pray that you remember them, Lord, and cause them to finish well. Father, I know there are even pastors they are ministers of the gospel who trash their potential by allowing themselves to enter in the house of a prostitute, by allowing themselves to desire money more than the color on their lives. 
<laughs> and they made themselves a mess. Even as I speak right now, their potential has been trashed. God, I pray that you have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. And cause them to find someone and walk back and be accountable. Cause them to find someone and confess and ask God to give them the grace to march back, to march back, to come back. So God, I pray for your goodness and masses over them all. And this day I come again as every plan of the enemy. Devil, I will not finish without letting you know that you are a loser. From the beginning, you have trapped men. But you are a loser. Satan, listen, we know your destiny is hell. The lake of fire is where you will go. And we are children of the Most High God, washed by the blood of the Lamb of God, protected and guarded and guided by the Holy Spirit of God. We are more than conquerors. So you are a loser. Get off your hand. Yes, take off your hands and let God's children walk back to faith, walk back to abundance. May the glory of God descend in a special way. Lord, I give you praise. I give you honor. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in today. What a joy to come live in your homes. What a joy to share what God puts on our heart. What a joy to speak life where there is no life. And so, if you're wondering where you can go to church, New Life Bible Church is a place where you are welcome. You are welcome to worship with us. Come on Sunday at 8 a.m. Come on Sunday at 11. Come at 3 p.m. We have space for everybody. We have an overflow and we have space around. Come, let's worship together and you will find your bouncing back in strength and far better than you were. God bless you. It has been awesome being with you in our online experience. I was blessed and I believe you are blessed as well and your life will never remain the same. In case you want to watch the video, please feel free to watch them on YouTube as they are uploaded for you. If you want to give your tithes and offerings, please check the information at the end of the video and be guided on how to go about it. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. See you next Sunday.